He is an award-winning performance poet and storyteller. He's also a sexuality educator, author, and public speaker. He has successfully integrated his love of performing with his love of education and community building. In the fields of sexuality, race, manhood, and arts advocacy, he has over 20 years experience as a stage performer, teaching artist, workshop facilitator, consultant, activist, and mentor to youth. Mo Beasley's presentations range from cutting edge perspectives on sex, sexuality, to artist action, fatherhood, and family building, hip hop as a tool for education, to redefining masculinity for the 21st century. Please welcome Mo Beasley. I love it. I come up here and there's a wet spot on the stage. <laughs> I'm in the right spot. <laughs> the only part of that long, uh, that long bio that I can't share is that I'm a storyteller. So, I'd like to tell a story or two. <clears throat> you got to take the pussy. You got to take the pussy, young blood. That's your problem. You're fucking around asking for it. And she wants you to take the pussy. Huh? <laughs> I was 19 home on holiday break for my first semester at Howard University. And my Uncle Reuben, who was a master hustler, philosopher, manipulator, wise man, no good nigga, and a father. <laughs> Joe College, what's up baby, you back home? How was school? How the ladies treating you? Um, I don't know. <laughs> that means you ain't getting that, huh? So tell me about it. Why you ain't getting that? Is there somebody you trying to get? Yeah, but I don't... You know, tell me about it. So I commenced to tell them about this one young lady that I'm chasing and I'm really digging. And she likes me and we hang out. We go to the movies and we go back to my place or my room. <laughs> my place, my room. <laughs> my spot in the corner. <laughs> we make out, we kiss get half naked, everything gets hot, gets wet, gets sweaty, and she stops. Every weekend, every time, we get right there, and she stops me. I know she can't get more wet. I know I can't get more hard. I don't understand what's wrong. The problem is, boy, you got to take the pussy. <laughs> That's what's going on. You got to take the pussy, take charge, take control, take the question mark out. Take the pussy. <laughs> What's going on here? See, this young gal is like most women in this country, in this world. They've been raised to be good girls. They've been raised to, to do right, be right. So now that they're grown, they're in school, they're on their own, they can do what they want, get what they want, have who they want, they still got all this noise in their head. They hear their mama and their daddy, their preacher, and their big sister, their big brother tell them, be a good girl, be a good girl, and it's fucking their shit up. So they need you to just take the pussy. They need you to grab them up, throw them down, rip this shit off, take the pussy. Because then afterwards they can call their girl and say, he just took it from me. I don't know what <laughs> That's what they're waiting for, boy. Take the pussy. When you go back to school, y'all get to go out next time you go to the movies. First of all, you don't ask her what movie she wants to go see. You don't ask her if she wants to go out dancing. You go, we're going to the movies. <laughs> There's a party on, on there's a party on, on some whatever y'all party at club. You say, look here, we're going to the party tonight. And when you get to the party, you're dancing, you're having a good time, and she's and she's looking good and sweating and swinging that pretty little ass, and you see motherfuckers checking it out, and they want some of that. What you do is you go over there and you say, get your coat, we're gone. <laughs> you take on back to the room and you do your thing, what you've been doing, and you get to that spot, and she all hot and her shit is off, and your finger's there, and she's in, <laughs> and you just take it. And she'll act like she mad, she'll fight you a little bit, but you know, you just gotta push. Oh. You know, oh, that sounded like, like date rape. <laughs> <laughs> now you're fucking up, now going too far, you took the shit too far, I ain't talking about that. This is somebody want to be with you. You know what I'm saying? So, 
don't, you know what I'm saying? No, I ain't talking about hurting nobody. I'm talking about just being a man, being a crash. This is some primal shit. This is shit that been here since the beginning of the time when motherfuckers was in cave right shit on walls. <laughs> So I get back to school, and I try and take the question mark out, take control, take charge, and take the pussy. <laughs> I come out of the room like this. She, she's storming out, grabbing her shit. I don't know what's wrong with you. What do you think you was doing? Like, call my uncle and be like, uncle, it didn't work. <laughs> Tell me what you did. I mean, I'm sitting there trying to, you know, do my thing and, you know, clothes are coming off and she's feeling good and we're kissing and all, you know, and I'm rubbing and I'm holding and squeezing and she's squeezing back. And then, you know, I get to that point, she goes, stop. I'm like, no, come on. I said, stop. I said, come on, shh, shh. I said, stop. I said, shh, come on, shh, shh. I said, shh, shh. She just kicks me in my chest off the bed. And after that, for the rest of the semester, she ain't talk to me. She see me in the yard, she act like I ain't even there. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna put him over me, I'm sorry. To the end of the semester, we get to, uh, she been online and shit, she crosses over. And we're at this party, and she's there, and she's dancing on the table at the party. And I'm looking up at her, and she got some stress pants on, and like a little tight shirt on, and, and you know, her ass is looking all arrogant. And, <laughs> Just generously curved, you know, they don't have her storming up steps and shit, and she just, you know, I'm just like, her dreads is bouncing all off her shoulders and shit, and swinging and whipping, and I'm just like, God, damn. And so she sits down at some point, and she's sweating, she's taking it easy, and I lean over to her, and I say, get your coat. I'm fucking you tonight. And at that point, I don't give a fuck, because she say no, she spit at me, she, I don't, and she looking so damn good, I don't give a fuck about getting shot down. And so I'm looking, and I'm waiting for her answer, and she goes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so she gets, she gets the stuff, we get outside, and I got this little Toyota Corona that I bought for like $600. <laughs> 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 Showing your age. It was silver with maroon inside, interior leather, interior, well, it was plastic, but it was, it felt like leather at 19 years old. And so we're getting the, getting the ride, and now we're in the car, and she done said yes, and I took the question mark out, I'm taking charge, yeah, and I'm driving, and I realized, well, where the fuck we gonna go? Because, <laughs> you know, semester's over, and the dorm is closed. <laughs> Shit. I can't thought that far away. Hey. So we're driving around, driving around, driving around, driving around, driving around. And I find, a, find myself behind the behind the, uh, elementary school in the parking lot. Uh -oh. And we're making out in the car, you know. Shit, we still 19, 20, we like it's fun. We're making out in the car, we're sweating, the windows are steamed up. I done pulled the recline, the passenger seat, and I climbed over. Legs is up on her legs is up on the dashboard in the window, and my arms is trying to just you know keep from falling off and you know and whatever. And we going for it until I see flashing lights. Again. Oh, fuck! Like I ain't had nothing the whole semester, fellas. Y'all know what it's like when you're freshman at, at college, right? You don't get no ass until like you're a sophomore. So, so, Maybe it was just me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody is <laughs> going to die. Fuck y'all. Y'all know what you're saying. Leave me hanging. I got ass. That's the best of freshmen, man. Freshman 101. <laughs> so, I'm in the car. We're in the car. The flat lights is flashing and shit. I look up and in the back. I look up. And behind the car, there's a police car, two behind the car. I climb back into the driver's seat, and I look forward, and there's about two, three cars in front of the car. Oh, no. So we're surrounded. Oh, oh. Cops come in the car, they say, uh, license registration. First he says, so, sir, you are uh, in the military? <laughs> nah. So you, uh, what? I said, can't afford a hotel room? I'm like, now you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like take me to jail, but don't be sitting there talking, you know what? So they go round and round and they ask her some shit and she tries to act like she, you know, she don't speak English. So something like, look man, we're gonna take your if you don't speak up, we're gonna take your ID and find out where you go. We're gonna take you home to your mama's doorstep. So she give it up and all that. So at this point I'm embarrassed. 
my dick is real limp at this point. Um, <laughs> I'm, and you know, we, the cops, you know, just look at me like, shame on you, son, go home. And we get in the car, I'm driving it back to her mama's house. I can't even look at her, I'm so damn embarrassed. And I'm just like, oh, I can't believe this shit. I, just, you know, I thought I was finally there. And then we get back to the crib, we're driving, and I can't say nothing. We're finally there at the house, I got my hand on the, on the I'm standing where I go, look. I'm really sorry, I just, I don't, you know, I just, I was, you know, thought we was, just, we have, can you forgive me? She looks at me and says, I had a wonderful time. I can't wait for to do it again. But <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just, you yeah, so I clap for me. <laughs> Bravo. So we got a take, the question mark out. Take the pussy. Yeah. A love, can I do a love piece? Yeah. No. What was that before? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you can't define it. There's a category for it. <laughs> I want you the right way. I want you and I want you to want me, baby. Just like I want you. I want you like Adam wanted Eve. You see, growing up, I was taught in my Bible studies that Adam and Eve was the story of original sin. You know the story. God made paradise, the animals, the heavens, and the angels, and the being that would one day be Christ, and decided to make somebody to oversee it all, right? A manager of eternity, a cat named Adam. Adam was put there naked, is a story they told me, running through the forest, overseeing the fish and the fowl. And then Adam got lonely. And Adam could hang out with God and have conversations with God. Adam, as they told me, Adam could hang out with the angel named Gabriel and shoot the shit with Lucifer's foot before his ass got kicked out. <laughs> but he was still lonely. See, I don't know how the story goes. Adam was sleeping. God cracked a rib, built a woman. Adam woke up and said, who is you? Hi, I'm Eve. Oh, word, word, okay. <laughs> and they got together, and he was good. And they were hanging out, and they were chilling, and overseeing the fish and the fowl, and playing with the lion and the lamb, and all this good stuff, until God said, don't touch that tree. Don't eat no shit off that tree right there. <laughs> I can eat everything, anywhere, play with anything, anybody, except anything on that tree. And y'all know, that's some old mean shit to me. You like having the children go, you can play in this playground, you can have everything you want, but just don't play with that one toy. Y'all know the first thing a child is going to do when y'all ain't home is go play with that toy. So y'all know the story, Eve eats the apple, talking to the snake and shit. Now, they told me that Adam had a chance to get out of trouble. Well, Adam showed back up, Eve had already eaten the apple, was already hanging out with the snake, and she was trying to get his ass in trouble. She was like, come on, Adam, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. He said, nah, I mean, you know what God said? He said, don't eat it. Like, come on, Adam, come on, Adam, what's this apple? What's this apple? Come on. <laughs> and at that moment, it was a pivotal moment. And Adam, if Adam had said no, then God would have come back and found out what happened. He would have cast Eve out, and he would have given him a new mate. And he could have started all over again. That's how the story goes. And so Adam thought about it. He said, if I eat the apple, no longer immortal, no longer get to hang out in paradise. I can't commune with the divine and the angelic ones, but I lose. But if I don't eat it, I lose her. So the story goes, and the joke says that for that time when Adam ate the apple, it was the first time a man thought with his dick, and we've been fucked up ever since. <laughs> And I thought as a kid, and now I said, you know, Adam ate the apple, he and Eve got cast out. They, they knew life and death and knowledge of self and all that. And I realized, or I thought, and I think, that it was the first time a man said to a woman that I would die for you. And he did. They call it original sin. Sounds like original love to me. Thank you.